Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to turn something a little different. I have to do a torus shape for a commission that's coming up. And I've never done a torus, which is basically just a donut shape. It, uh, the small diameter of the torus is around four, four inch in diameter. And then the, the full circle part of the, the donut is just over eight inches. Uh, so I'm going to use this piece of elm that I've had kicking around. I've just kind of marked out where I can think I can get the piece out of it. And again, this is just my practice piece. You can kind of see this will be the outside of the donut. And I've had to do up a couple of sketches because this is a little more complicated than I've done before. So I'm thinking the top of the torus is basically like turning uh, a sphere. So I'm going to try that, make a bit of an octagon out of it, and turn it roughly into a sphere shape. And uh, yeah, then I'm just going to have to experiment with how I get the front done, how I turn it around and get the back done. And so it's a bit of a learning curve for me. Enjoy the show. This just gives you a visual image of what the torus looks like. And then I made up a sketch with the, all the dimensions that I needed for the project. Turning the torus was really like turning a sphere. And I did that in another video that I produced. So I, I just took the dimensions from turning a sphere and used that to, uh, to size up the torus. I'm just going to cut this piece up roughly to shape and then mark out again approximately the outside diameter of the torus. And I'll just use a 3 8 inch hole here because I'm going to use a, a screw chuck to mount the piece initially. I'm just using a half inch bowl gouge to roughly shape the piece and get my rough dimensions. And now I'm just creating a mortise and uh, that will be used to hold the piece on the chuck the other way around and in that way I won't, uh, I won't interfere with the torus shape in any way.
Now I'm getting closer to finished size and rather than use the gouge, I think I'm just going to use a parting tool to get down to the correct outside diameter. And I'll do that in a few spots and using a pair of calipers and that way I'm sure that I'll have the correct outside diameter across the whole piece. Those extra large calipers, they come from Wood Turning Wonders in the US. I'm sure you might be able to get them elsewhere, but I did see them there and they've come in handy at times when I've had extra large pieces like this. Now that I have the calipers the same uh, diameter all the way across, I can just mark those areas and then now just level the surface off and I'll have a nice flat surface across there. Now this project has taken a lot more measuring and fiddling to get the right shape than I normally am used to. Most of my work I just sort of freeform and use my eye to give me the shape I want. But in this case this particular commission requires like a, a perfect torus shape so I will need to be more mindful of the dimensions. And this surface here I'll level off with the bowl gouge and then just use a straight edge to make sure it's nice and flat. And then uh, just take off any little bumps with a negative rake scraper. Now I'm just laying out some of the dimensions so I can uh, get the torus shape which as I mentioned earlier ends up just being basically a sphere shape on the top surface. So I can use what I have done in the past for proportions and just the approach on how to make that, uh, that shape a perfect round sphere shape. I just realized I'm cutting the wood in the wrong direction there. This is bowl turning, so basically with the side grain I should be cutting in this direction. Oh well. Again, this is just a practice piece, so it's not really a big deal if I don't have a good surface finish. Same as before, I'll use a combination of bowl gouge and negative rake scraper to, uh, to get my surfaces where I need them. Now that I have the octagon shape, I'm going to put in additional lines to now make it a 16-sided object and then uh, I'll cut, make the cuts in between the, the lines which will get me closer and closer to 
a sphere shape on the top here. And now you can really see the shape developing into a, kind of a perfect donut shape here. Just a little bit more refinement here and there where things don't look quite right. And now I'm going to actually use this little uh, gauge of wood and just mark any high spots and then and kind of blend that all in. So the gauge is helpful at this point. This inside part of the donut is a little bit trickier, a little bit harder to make my, my measurements and my layout. But uh, I just keep working at it and using the gauge as well, just to get closer and closer to an inside donut shape here. Well, this side is pretty well done, close enough. After a bit of fiddling, I think I'm happy with it. So I'm going to sand this entire side. I've gone from 120 grit to uh, 400 grit in this case. Now I have to figure out a way to turn this around and do the other side. And what I've come up with is to use double-sided tape here on this finished surface. I've left this on the chuck and I'm going to put it up against my jumbo jaws and I've made some little wooden pieces set in there. So the first thing I do is basically push it up against the jumbo jaws and then I tighten down those four little wooden pieces and yeah, it's running fairly true, so I'm pretty happy with that. You may have noticed I did use a tailstock adapter, so I was able to put the piece fully in the tailstock and push it up against the jaws and still be basically centered up. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Now the process here to do the inside of the donut is exactly the same as the other side. Uh, I'm just taking a bit of care though. The, I'm not turning the piece quite as fast and I'm taking light cuts because it's just uh, double sided tape and those little wooden blocks that are holding the piece on. So I'm just trying to be very careful.
Well, I got it all done. This was a tricky little piece, uh, but it turned out okay, I think. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It's not really an artistic piece, but I'll just keep it around. And uh, stay tuned for some images.